Welcome to today's briefing. I'm Aaron. With the recent number of incidents with the F-35 aircraft, including some loss of life, I thought it'd be interesting to go out and see what public reports were made available recently talking about the F-35 aircraft and its program. Sure enough, the Government Accountability Office had just finished a study uh, with a report in September 2023 called the Future Sustainment Strategy, and does the DOD need to reassess it? It is a 96-page report covering the approximately 450 F-35 aircraft serving in all three branches, or in three branches rather, of the United States. The Air Force, the Marine Corps, and the Navy have these planes. So the Department of Defense F-35 Joint Program Office is overall in charge of this program. The buck stops with them. In the end, they're gonna be the ones that have to fix any problems with this program. But they're given the authority for funding, writing contracts, executing policy, which is the most important thing here, I think, for the entire program. Below them, they have what's called primary contractors and there's only two. So this starts off very simple. Lockheed Martin makes the aircraft, Pratt & Whitney makes the engines. Those are their responsibilities. Where things get very complicated though, is those two primary contractors hire subcontractors, and these can be from the hundreds to the thousands for every little thing the program needs for sustainment in the field. And then finally below them are the three different variants that are in use right now uh, amongst the three branches. So the subcontractor level is the least defined of all these levels. No subcontractors are named in this report, which is a problem I have, and they're they seem to be the fulcrum on which whether or not this program is successful or not d depends. So where are these subcontractors? They're primarily at maintenance depot locations. And those are all over the country here. You have the white diamond shapes on this map are depot maintenance locations. And we now have a depot in Japan and one recently opened up in the United Kingdom for the F-35 program. So the subcontractors are a large part of the success of this program. So what are the issues brought forth by this report? I'm gonna quickly list all six, and then we'll talk about who's responsible for each one of them. The first is a heavy reliance on contractors at depot maintenance facilities is the very first problem the report points out. So the process that we set up from the very beginning is part of the problem. The second thing is inadequate maintenance training for the technicians. There is inadequate technical data for repairs and documentation, and that's infuriating because we saw that with the LCS program. Looks like it's in the aviation programs as well. Fourth is the lack of funding that prevents adequate supply. Uh, five is the lack of support equipment to perform repairs. A lot of these repairs require special tools, whether it's a fancy screwdriver or a special type of heavy lifting equipment, and there simply isn't enough available at depot maintenance facilities to sustain the fleet of aircraft. And finally, a lack of spare parts on site at installations delays repairs. All right, this is what the uh, non-mission capability supply rate looks like this decade. Since 2020, we have never achieved our mission capable goal for any of the F-35 programs in any of the branches. And the primary reason we're, we don't have enough planes in the air or mission capable is because of this maintenance uh, sustainment process that isn't sustaining anything. And as we add numbers of F-35s to the fleet, you can see the trend of number of planes or percentage of planes not being mission capable has been rising for three years. That's not gonna change unless something in the program changes. So who is responsible for what? This might be the most important table in the entire report right here. Uh, it breaks down the primary contractors, remember that's Lockheed Martin and Pratt and & Whitney and their little subcontractors versus the government, which is the DOD F-35 Joint Program Office. All right, the first issue that they pointed up was heavy reliance on contractors at depot maintenance facilities. That is squarely on the responsibility of the primary contractors. They need to get their act together, become more efficient, more organized and help out our branches maintain these planes. Inadequate maintenance training. The subcontractors that Lockheed Martin and Pratt and & Whitney hired provide the training for the enlisted technicians in the Air Force, Marine Corps, and Navy to fix these planes. Whenever our technicians are graduating schools and going into the field to repair these planes, they still need to involve the subcontractors many times for stuff that they should have been taught or should know how to do after graduating, and they don't. So they're involving the subcontractors more than expected, more than uh, they should, and it's costing time and money. 
because of failed training. Okay, number three is the incomplete technical data in the books and the technical documentation, the procedures the technicians are using in the field to repair the F-35s, get to a point and then stop and say, contact your subcontractor. And then they have to go look up who that is and then contact that person. A lot of times, and this is what the report found in many of the maintenance depots that did interviews with this team, with this, with this report team, said that they would get to where they just needed to order the part. They had troubleshot everything. The plane's gonna be repaired. They know how to do it. They simply can't get the part number. And that's what's egregious, is the subcontractor in the procedure is inserting itself at the very end so they can check that box for a billable hour to the government saying that they helped repair this, this plane. And it's written in the procedure like that. So that needs to stop. That's what happened to the Navy with the LCS program, the over-involvement of subcontractors by design is happening in the F-35 program, causing um, a lower than expected uh, mission capability sustainment. Okay, five, let's go to lack of support equipment uh, to perform repairs. Those are the special tools I talked about. This is very obvious to me because I was on both the enlisted side when I was active duty doing the maintenance. And now that I'm out of the Navy, I also do contract work, have done so for years as a subcontractor. And I've seen this happen where the subcontractors to save money will not build or pay for or have available enough special tools because they're expensive to create, they're proprietary, they're one of a kind. And so they, they build the minimum necessary to meet the contract minimum needs. And so if you have multiple, in this case, F-35s ready to install a new part or need uh, you know something re removed and, and replaced, uh, that tool is not available to do the job. So they simply have to wait. So not having enough of these proprietary tools on hand is a real problem. And that is something the primary contractor and the subcontractor need to figure out. You know, that's between those two. And then finally, a lack of spare parts at installations. Even if you get the special tool and you remove the part and then you go to the maintenance depot to get the new part, a lot of times it's not there. They have to send out a request for it. And who knows when that part's gonna arrive. So those are the big things. Five of the six problems with the F-35 program lay squarely at the feet of the primary contractor and more specifically the subcontractor. And it is up to the overall body, the F-35 program office, to, who has the authority to fix this, to enforce the standards on the primary contractors, who then will need to enforce the standards on the subcontractors. But there's a whole lot of cooks in the kitchen here, and each one is taking a little piece of the meal for themselves as the meal's being prepared. And that's what's causing the delay in a lot of these F-35 programs. Again, we have never, not once, ever met the mission capable goal of the F-35 program this decade because of these reasons. And it's up to the F-35 Joint Program Office to fix it.